Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. Alright you guys, when we left off in the last Unity build video, I had the neck looking like this, which resembles some type of ancient weapon. Um, I'm going to jump over to the bandsaw and at least saw off this extra wood right here. We'll put this thing in the vise and plane these surfaces down flat. Then we're going to start to work out this headstock shape like I think it needs to be. And you guys, I'm feeling my way through this build. You know, I can't say for certain that I even know what I'm going to do with this. But it's done now and we're going to work it out. Worst case scenario, I will put a headstock plate on this neck and we'll deal with it that way. I still think it's going to create a pretty interesting pattern. So we're going to see what it looks like once I get the headstock designed and cut out and then we'll just continue on with the build. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get over to the bandsaw and get this done you guys. So I think the first thing we need to do is to plane the face of this down. The back side of the headstock is going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. I'll probably have to use a block plane on it, or either I can take it over the spindle sander and at least get the back of this thing flat. Let's jump over here and get that taken care of. All right, so we're over at the spindle sander now, and we're just going to flatten this headstock out real quick. That is nice. Let's get down inside these holes and mark out these tuners. I'm going to measure 12 millimeters from my nut line that way, and that's going to be the amount of offset for the treble side tuners. Got my jigsaw set up over here. And this is like a $40 saw I got on Amazon because I don't use one very often. This is pretty much what I'm thinking. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see my drawing. But that's it. I don't want sharp points on it. I want it to come to a rounded shape up there. If we're too wide here and too skinny here, our perspective's gonna be off. I don't want this too wide up here on this end, but it needs to be wide enough till it, it doesn't look anemic or sick or anything, you know what I mean? It needs to be wide enough to carry and to balance out the whole design of the headstock. And I think we're pretty close. We're going to hop over to the bandsaw and cut some more of this material off of here and get it a little bit closer to the line so I don't have so much work to do on the spindle sander. Then we're going to come back over, hook the vacuum up to the spindle sander, and we're going to work on this headstock shape. All right, this is going to throw things into perspective for us a little better. So that's what we're looking like now. And I honestly am really digging it. I don't think I'm going to need to cover that up with the headstock plate. I think it adds some dimension and some depth to this guitar. I think it's going to look really cool once we get that sanded in. If there's any question about it, I'm excited. All right, I'm going to crank this thing up and we're just going to get after it. So it pretty much ended up exactly like what I pictured in my mind. I really like it. It creates a, uh, a visual misconception of sorts, you know? I'm going to shave these two alignment pins off since we don't need these anymore. I'll take my crank neck chisel. We'll take care of that real quick. And we probably need to shift over and start to work um, on our fretboard for a little while. This is the best $40 I've spent in quite some time, you guys. This is a Narex three-quarter inch 
cranked neck chisel. Uh, you can get them on eBay from Tay Tools or you can go to taytools.com, T-A-Y-T-O-O-L-S.com. Look at the finish level on that chisel. I mean, it is supreme. This crank neck chisel makes it so convenient to do things like this. There's our neck in its current form. I can't get over how much I like that. I think it's gonna look cool from the back too. I've decided that I'm going with a black ebony fretboard. This is pretty much solid black. I think that is gonna look sweet, especially with those Shaler Da Vinci tuners that I got that are black with pearl buttons. They got here, by the way, and I'll show you guys those when we get ready to mess about with them. I also got a Shaler 3D6 black chrome bridge and two Shaler speed knobs in black chrome. So that is the hardware setup. All right, you guys, so the first thing I think we need to do is lay out this fretboard. So I am using a 25 inch scale Maximum Guitar Works fretboard template. We'll flush cut this fretboard after it's glued to the neck and that's how I do it. I don't pre-make the fretboard. I've seen guys do it that way and that's fine. I'm not saying that's wrong. I've just gotten kind of used to uh, gluing the fretboard a little oversized to my neck and then flush cutting it after the fact. Now we'll take our 600 millimeter ruler and draw in that center line. All right, so that leaves me enough room past the back of this nut line here. I'll cut the fretboard off right there because um, we're using a Gibson style quarter inch thick nut on this guitar. The pin in my jig's right here, but the cut is right here. That's 81 millimeters from what I've been able to measure. I made myself a scribe line in this template right there. There's actually two of them because I screwed up the first time. It's the one furthest away from the nut that I'm using. So that's where our nut line needs to fall. I hear it starting to rain. Don't need much. Activator on the back of our fretboard. There we go. Now, let's zoom in a little and get these fret slots cut. So this first one's gonna be the nut line. Fret slot one, you wanna be deadly accurate with these things, you guys, I can't stress that enough. I have to give a shout out to my buddy Mike at ASA Guitars. He gifted me this fret slotting jig, and this thing has absolutely saved me so much time. So Mike, if you watch this video, brother, thank you so much. There we go, you guys. Those two lines that run across, that's where my truss rod nut needs to fall. That's what we look like now. I've got a gross of pike blades from Switzerland. These are 3.0s or 3.0s. These are tiny, tiny little blades. Let's make us a little brad all punch right there to give us somewhere that this drill bit can follow. It looks to be about six. We're gonna use a five just to be safe. All right, and I'm right on the outside line of that. So we're in good shape. I'm gonna take a three millimeter drill bit and drill two more holes on either side of that one. So now 
our saw won't have to work so hard. Okay. I can take some chisels or files or chisels and files and clean this hole up and get it like I want it. I don't want it to just be a hole. I like to do a little fade cut or a chamfer down into that hole. But the reason I'm doing this now is because I can't glue my fretboard on and have that half moon thing going on without that hole to allow my truss rod nut to extend up inside my fretboard a little. I learned that lesson um, when I built the Astrolabe 25 guitar because I actually had a major problem trying to figure out how I was gonna do that after the fact. So I'm gonna grab myself my little quarter inch carving gouge. This is a vintage Buck Brothers that I ordered off of eBay. I paid 20 bucks for this thing. Then I'll get my little three millimeter Irwin chisel here. And we're just going to get after this. I'm going to hang it off the edge of the table now so I can actually do some through work on this thing. All right, you guys, I've been working on this for a while. And that's where we are. Is take a piece of this 150 grit sandpaper and just roll it up in like a tube as small as I can get it. Put a light background behind it and that kind of helps me figure out what needs to do what because you want it symmetrical. This Japanese finger file, $7.50 on Lee Valley Tools, and they make these in five different shapes. Absolutely killer. All right, you guys. I've been sanding and carving and doing all that stuff, and that's what I've ended up with, and it's nice and cool. I like it. We need to redefine the center line, but before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this fretboard off at the nut. I'd rather do this with a little razor saw than I had on the bandsaw. This thing will cut really clean. I'm gonna take my crimson fret leveling beam, little 180. Got a nice flush cut right there on the end. Now we can trace this fretboard out on here. Again, so I don't have to do this after we get the fretboard glued to the neck. We want to go ahead and redefine this half moon shape I want. So just like that is what I'm after. I'm going to get over the bandsaw and cut this out right here. We need to get that shape finalized before the fretboard gets glued to the neck. The sides we can flush up on the router table, but we can't do anything to this end on the router table because our truss rod nut's going to be in the way. So we'll clamp that fretboard down to the table and take a file, Iwasaki, whatever we need to, to get that shape rounded up. So let's get that done real quick. Now we'll go to a little bit smoother cut file. And that should do it. Now let's grab a sanding block. And there we go. All right, you guys, so we got our half moon shape or our semicircle cut into the end of the fretboard. I wanna glue this thing to the, to the neck blank or to the neck at this point. This is not a blank anymore. And I'm really digging this headstock shape at this point, you guys. I like that triangle. 
I, I just do, I think it's cool. Let's check this neck for flatness to make sure it has not moved while we've been working on it over the past few days. It's dead flat. I didn't think it would, but I need to mark the center line over at least on the nut side. So I've got that center line copied over to the side. All right, let me grab myself a small drill bit. We'll go for a two millimeter. A little spot of super glue. One more time. Let's take a little silicone. I don't do that for adhesion. I do that for sound dampening so my truss rod does not rattle. space these evenly down the neck and I'll save room in between these to add some screw clamps yeah we're looking good you guys nice all right you guys so we got the fretboard glued to the neck at this point I'm gonna come down tomorrow I'll flush up the sides of my fretboard we're gonna get our first look at what that necks gonna really look like I'm excited about it I hope you guys like it too. I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. I hope everybody has a really great week, regardless of what week it is. I hope you guys have a great life, <laughs> you know? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. All right, you guys, I'm back in the shop. Tonight is Thursday, January the 12th. Here's where we are. I've got radiusing to do. We need to get the frets installed. I've got neck shaping to do. So we're more than likely going to end up having a fourth and final neck video. What I want to get done before we wrap this thing up is I would like to get this fretboard flushed up. We'll pre-drill our tuners with probably a two millimeter bit. And I may do those by hand since we're only pre-drilling those. We'll do that. We'll get our fretboard radius. We've got plenty of cleanup work we can do that will carry us up to the shaping process. I'm gonna get over to the bandsaw and just saw the, uh, the excess wood off the side of my fretboard, and then we'll get the router table set up and get that done. So here's our neck right here. I think it's gonna look so killer when we put this neck down in that body up against that nicely rippled flame maple I've got that I'm going to use for a top on this guitar. Here it is, just so you guys can get a refresher look at this thing. It's got those burl pins in it, but you know, I really, I really think that makes it. I mean, I, I don't like ordinary. That is insanely rippled. You guys, I paid $40 for this set right here. And this is absolutely 5A flame. It was listed in the defect section because of those burl pins right there. To be completely honest with you guys, I would not have bought this wood if it were not for those burl pins. I love that. Everyone uses insanely clean flamed maple. It's beautiful, but it is ordinary. And I don't really like ordinary. Anyway, I'm gonna get the router table set up. We're gonna carry this thing across the router table, get our fretboard flushed up. This thing's gonna start to look like a guitar neck after that, you guys. I'll be right back. Now we're looking like a guitar neck. So there we are. I am so, so happy with this thing, you guys. It is looking so much better 
than even what I had pictured in my head. I am so happy with how that headstock turned out. And especially considering what it looked like when I had it um, in medieval weapon form. Anyway, there we are. We need to figure out everything we need to do to this neck that will require us or will make it easier for us to have these two flats on the back because as it stands right now, our neck will still sit flat on the table. That's an advantage as far as this is concerned right now. So I think what we probably should do is take our brad off and um, punch in our tuner locations. I went down through here and I measured the distance of these tuners from my center line on all six to make sure they would stay nice and symmetrical even though they're offset up the length of the headstock. I've got a two millimeter drill bit in my drill right now. All right, there are our tuners pre-drilled. All I was doing was giving that drill bit somewhere to really start its path. All right, you guys, we're back in the shop. Tonight is January the 14th, it's Saturday. And what else would I be doing tonight other than down here working on this guitar, talking to you guys, and doing what I love. I cannot wait to get to work on this body and get this figured out and I've got some really interesting ideas starting to come into my mind about what I want to do with color on this thing. I've got a 12 inch radius block connected to this push block that I got in a set that I bought on Amazon for like 30 bucks. It came with about five different push block style tools and considering this is ebony I think I'm gonna go 40 grit until we get a nice radius established here. All right, you guys, here we go. So, getting ready for a call in the morning with Geo. And we are going to film the final bit of the strap video. So we're getting ready to release that thing. And I am so anxious. Now I have a tendency to always sand a dip in the middle when I'm doing this. So I'm trying to take precautions to keep that from happening this time. One good thing about ebony is I can absolutely see my scratch pattern on there. And so far we're looking pretty even. tell you one thing I may need to do real quick. I think we should probably go ahead and deepen up these fret slots. I took it out of the jig. I am so glad I remembered to do this before we kept on going with that fretboard radius. I'm doing this after that. Um, comes with its share of issues, or potential issues at least. Now, let's go back to the table with our jig. Let's take our fat lead pencil and draw this fretboard up. Let's switch over to 80 grit and finish this out. I've got scratch pattern all the way down. Let's go to 150 instead of 80. 150 is going to give us a slightly better finish on our fretboard. We will have to work a little harder to get it. Let's put a straight edge on this thing. 
find out how flat we are. We're, we're looking amazingly good. I'm gonna take our small touch-up block with the 180 on it, and we're just gonna get this fretboard polished or sanded up to 180. And then we're gonna take it out of this jig for a minute. All right, so now what I wanna do is I have got some 180 Merca Abernet right here. I'm gonna put some of this on this soft sanding block. Let's check our radius with my WD radius gauge. It looks awesome. So now that I'm happy with the radius, I can take this Abernet and lightly go over our whole fretboard. This stuff just does a really fantastic job. I've got these Sunmite sheets right here, and these are multi-grit. These are 600 to 800. And this is gonna give us an idea of what this fretboard is gonna look like. And this stuff cuts really cleanly. There we go. This is gonna be such a great neck and I can't wait to carve this thing. So that's gonna have to wait for the next episode. We're gonna wrap this video up right here. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I know I have. I am so happy with this thing so far, and I am so interested to know what you guys think about this build. So don't forget to drop me some comments. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date when I release the next video in this series and every other video here on the channel. Be on the lookout for the Ultimate Strat collaboration videos to start posting very soon. Geo and I are having our final video chat tomorrow morning, which will be Sunday, January the 15th. That will wrap up the neck build episode for the Ultimate Strat collaboration, and we're going to start posting videos after that. So you guys be on the lookout for that. I am so happy with how my neck turned out on that guitar as well, and I can't wait to find out what you guys think about that guitar. Thank you so much, you guys, for stopping by the channel and checking out this video and hanging in with me for as long as you have. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for being a part of my journey so far. I love this community. I love guitar building, and I can't wait to make some more progress on this thing. And until then, you guys, as always, peace and love.